Hi there, in this video we're going to cover the HLOOKUP function. Now take a look at our VLOOKUP function video uh, because both actually go very much hand in hand. Now if you had seen the VLOOKUP function video you would have come across the screen. And what we have here in column A are four people's names followed by the lunch that they ate uh, from Monday through Friday. And using the VLOOKUP function at that time, we were able to answer the question, what did Katie eat for lunch on Friday? And we can do the same thing using an HLOOKUP function. So let's start with understanding what the HLOOKUP function can do. First, what it means is H stands for horizontal lookup. And essentially what the HLOOKUP function can do is it will return a value that is located y number of rows below the search entity within a defined data set. So essentially we have these variables, we have y which is the number of rows below the search entity which is another variable and the last is the data set. And you'll recall if you've seen our VLOOKUP video, that this corresponds almost in sync with the VLOOKUP with the only exception being rather than looking at the number of rows, we're looking at the number of columns. So in the VLOOKUP function, we looked at X number of columns to the right of the search entity. Okay, so just as you would expect to set up the HLOOKUP formula, we do something nearly parallel to the VLOOKUP function, which is we have the search entity as the first argument, followed by the data set. The third is the number of rows. And the fourth is the closest match argument. So let's take a look at how we can apply the HLOOKUP function to answer the question, what did Katie eat for lunch on Friday? So again, we start with an equal sign followed by HLOOKUP. Now in this case, the search entity is Friday because we want this function to look at where the Friday is located, which in this case is in column F, and to select one, two, three, four rows down and return wrap. So here we go, HLOOKUP Friday. In this case, this is our data set here, ranges from cells B1 through F5. Now the number of rows that we want this formula to return is one, two, three, four, because we want to answer the question, what did Katie eat for lunch? Katie is located four rows down. And again, we have to include the first row as row one. So it's essentially starting from the top, row one, two, three, four, four rows down. And finally, we want an exact match, so we include the word false. So just as we anticipated, the answer is wrap. So I'm going to take a look here, and I want to copy this formula over just so we can see exactly what the formula was in this cell here that returned wrap. And the reason I want to do that is I want to answer the same question, except rather than using the HLOOKUP function, let's use the VLOOKUP function. Basically, what I want to show is that these two for formulas are so similar, and yet I will show you how they are constructed slightly differently. So here we have it, equals VLOOKUP. Now in this case, rather than having a search entity um, that's a day of the week, we're actually going to use the name as the search entity because the VLOOKUP is going to look across columns. So in this case, we VLOOKUP Katie, assuming we're answering the same question, what did Katie eat for lunch on Friday? We have the search entity of Katie followed by this data set. This data set must include the name of the of uh, in column A. So all the names are included within this data set. And the number of columns over, the X, the number of columns over includes one, two, three, four, five, six. The reason it's six is we have to start here counting from column A, and we know that to answer the question of what Katie ate on Friday, Friday is located six columns over to the right when you include this first column as column one. And finally, we want an exact matching, so we use the word false. Now, if you take a look at the VLOOKUP 
video, you'll understand how uh, this last argument can be changed to true and under what circumstances we can do that. In. So again, if we click enter here, you will have the same exact answer with the only exception is we use a different function, which is the VLOOKUP function. So let's just compare and contrast here. The difference between HLOOKUP and VLOOKUP. HLOOKUP looks down horizontally by rows, so the search entity must be contained in the first row. In this case, we search for Friday. We use the data set B1 through F5. And because we're answering the question, what did Katie eat for lunch on Friday, we have to look one, two, three, four rows down in order to get the answer. In both cases, we're going to have the exact match, so the fourth argument in both cases will be false. All right, let's look at the VLOOKUP. In the VLOOKUP circumstance, we're going to be searching vertically to the right of your search entity. So the search entity here is Katie. And we have a data set that covers the range of cells A2 to F5. And in this case, we're looking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six columns over from the search entity, and both will yield the same result. So now you've got two powerful lookup tools under your belt. You've got the VLOOKUP and the HLOOKUP. When would you use one over the other? Well, it really all depends on how your spreadsheet is set up. And that will determine whether or not it's more applicable to use either the HLOOKUP or the VLOOKUP. Um, but as you can see, both have a very similar function, um, with the exception of one looking columns to the right, while, which is the VLOOKUP, while the HLOOKUP looks at rows starting from the search entity downwards. OK, go ahead, enjoy learning about the HLOOKUP and VLOOKUP, and we'll see you next time.